stop overpaying on your home loan. We understand that managing your finances can be overwhelming, especially as interest rates continue to rise. With access to 70 plus lenders, our team of specialised brokers will find the best rates for your specific needs. Count on us to secure a lower rate swiftly, giving you the confidence you deserve. Book an appointment with one of our experts today to protect your financial well-being and secure your future. Call us now at 02 8866 or visit our website at finney.com.au. This is a Momentum Media production. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Smart Property Investment Show. I'm Grace Ormsby, but I am not the host of today's conversation. Bill Tarrant recently sat down with an expert in the broking space, Ian Rackett, the general manager of third-party banking at Bankwest. And the two had a really, really interesting conversation around how Australia's financial landscape is similar and how it's quite different to what's going on in the rest of the world. So it's a very fascinating conversation and I thought it was worthwhile sharing with you all here. I hope you enjoy. Mortgage and finance leader, bringing you closer to the most influential figures in Australia's burgeoning third-party distribution channel. Well, that's a big introduction. Uh, it is a channel that can teach you to grow and evolve, and it's something I've been connected with for many, many years. My name's Phil Tarrant, Managing Editor, Financial Services and Real Estate at Momentum Media. Thanks for joining us for another installment of Mortgage and Finance Leader podcast. I must admit, I feel like a bit of a fraud on this because it's not normally my domain. They don't normally let me touch mortgages here. They need me, keep me boxed up in my little real estate domain. Uh, if you know of the Smart Property Investment Show, you probably have heard my nasally whining tone before rabbiting on around real estate. But every now and then, I can make a smooth transition into mortgages as someone with quite a few mortgages and someone who is very pro broker. In relation to securing mortgages, I never got a loan if it hasn't been through a broker, and I think you'd be mad otherwise to try and go through a direct bank branch, but that's not what today is about. It's about the people, the personalities in mortgages, particularly third-party distribution is a name that most of you will be conscious of and would know pretty well. Synonymous maybe with mortgages. He's been in the helm. He's been at it for many, many years, Ian Rackett. He's a general manager of third-party banking at Bank West. He joins me in the studio. We're going to have a chat around mortgages, nearly two decades in mortgages. It probably dates him. He's not going to be very happy with me. And all and sundry in between, Ian. How you going? You well? really well, Phil. Very well. Thanks for joining us. My first podcast as well. So, yes. sorry, your first podcast in mortgages, my first my- podcast <laughs> overall. So, yeah, we're learning together. You've never done a podcast before? No. Why not? You haven't been asked? I haven't been asked, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but I listened to the intro there and it said that this is like the, the really, really important people in mortgages. You've never been I, on a podcast I before? I do. Tons and tons of interviews, tons and tons of written articles. This is the first time I've done a podcast. Okay. How are you this feeling This is the about new it? world. It'll be okay? I'm feeling really good. Right, yeah. yeah. That's okay. I, know, I know this will be good. Yeah. So how long have you been doing mortgages or third-party mortgages for in and around third-party mortgages? Oh, gosh. I first became a, a broker BDM in the UK, in Manchester, where I'm from, okay. at the age of 20. So that's the late 1980s. Jeez. Oh, Okay. Did mortgage broking exist in England then? So mortgage broking was big in England. I became a broker BDM at the age of 20, which is the late 1980s, for the Halifax. The Halifax was a building society back in those days. Mm. Massive mortgage player, biggest mortgage player in the UK market, bigger than the big four banks. Big four banks in the UK, similar to the big four banks in Australia. Halifax were the building society, the challenger, big on mortgages, 80% of mortgages came from brokers. At the age of 20, I'd just done a couple of years in branch when I joined the Halifax. Then I became a broker BDM and I was sold. So yeah, 30 years looking after brokers in two different countries at different levels. Okay. Well, it's going to give me plenty of material to Let's hope so. dig into it. You know, I, I've been involved um, in and around the advisor and mortgage business mm. for, for many years. So I'm quite comfortable around mortgages and both as someone who knows brokers and knows the machinations of mortgage broking in Australia. And, you know, at Momentum Media, I'd, I'd like to think, you know, the team here and of which there is many, many people for for probably nearing 15 years is is tried to give some sense to the narrative and the growth of mortgage mm. broking in Australia. And you, you've seen it go from strength to strength. And I remember my first involvement in mortgages many, many years ago, like market share was 
under 30%. Now yes. it's sort of 70 plus yeah. percent. So I, I'm quite keen on on seeing the similarities and differences between the two markets. But I, I remember um, a study tour that the advisor did, oh, I was just going to touch maybe 2017, maybe 2016 mm-hmm. to the UK. Uh, I was at the Royal Automobile Club and immersing ourselves inside of mortgages there and trying to get some sense of the similarities and differences of the two markets. But it sounds as though the UK mortgage broking sector is a good decade, if not longer, or, or further ahead of what the Australian market was or is. Things changed much since your time I in the late 80s doing that sort of thing? It was interesting um, recently going back to the UK. I've still got, because uh, I did 20 years in the UK, majority, as I say, looking after third party brokers. So I've still got a lot of friends there who are in the industry on the banking side and on the, on the mortgage broker side. So mm. a lot of similarities self-employed businesses, uh, much fewer brokers in the UK compared to Australia. There's only just over 5,000 brokers in the UK. Of course, we're up to 19,000 here. Very customer-focused, very entrepreneurial career brokers. You know what I mean by that? In terms of they they began their business in their 20s, you know, continuing on now into their 40s and, and doing a, an incredible job for the communities that they look after. But much smaller in numbers, uh, very protection-based conversations. So the commissions are not comparable between the UK and Australia. No comments on that. But the UK broker will make their income predominantly through protection sales, life, general, etc. Trail commission doesn't exist. But at the same time, uh, I was chatting to somebody over 90% of loans in the UK are on fixed rates and a lot of it is quite short term fixed rate mm-hmm. so there is repayment uh, commissions paid by the banks so some similarities some quite big differences the, the people are the same and I know quite a few UK brokers that have come to Australia that naturally you hook up with because you've got some shared legacies. And and those individuals are very successful in Australia as they're very successful in the UK. So the business model is the same. Some of the, the parts to it are slightly different. I remember the time we, we were out in the UK for a study tour and, and the sort of 40 or 50 Australian brokers slash sort of brokerage heads uh, on tour in London, which... Uh, so obviously, good fun, quite good fun. Yeah, um, and we had, we had a ball all the time. But I remember the learnings, and we had um, uh, we had different organisations coming in to have a chat with us from different levels of, of banking um, and and also broking. Um, uh, Santander sort of mm-hmm. had come in. We had uh, I'm going to tr- probably get these names wrong, but there's some very big broking businesses coming out of yarn with us, and, and a lot of brokers sort of sitting there scratching their head, going, "Well, we've got it pretty good compared to our." English cousins by way of trailing commissions. Um, but but what I really took away from it and still hasn't yet really, I think, been cracked in Australia is whether it's the right term or not, but cross-sell, you know. So you, you do the mortgage for someone, you may as well as, you know, a trusted advisor as part of that relationship, support them with other uh, financial advice decisions yeah. and, and that by way of protection, which is huge in, in the UK. I can't, I can't remember the percentage, but it must be 70 or 80% of all or mortgages are done by a UK broker would have some sort of protection element to yes, it. And I don't yeah, know what the number hard. I don't know what the number is in Australia, but I reckon it's a lot lower than that. I think diversification in general is becoming it's a, a bigger term, topic. Diversification. But I think diversification is tending to remain on the lending side rather than the protection side. Yeah. You know, so so I see a lot now brokers diversifying income into things like asset finance, commercial lending, and a number have of, of stepped into wealth space. There are definitely a lot of brokers doing some really good roles protecting. But I think you're quite right. It's it's probably in its infancy in Australia where it's far more established part of the UK brokers. I think there's, there's a definite difference there. There's a definite opportunity there as well. So you, you've been out of the UK for some time, but, but you certainly did a shift when you're in the UK, like two decades uh, within the broking fraternity, and you would have seen accelerated growth, no doubt, when Halifax doing most of its mortgages through third party, then the other banks realising, oh, hang on a second, they're probably on this to something. Is a, this is a great distribution you know, channel. It's a great distribution channel, yeah. and, and, and long shall it continue, particularly around choice, et cetera. But do you think there's as much relevance in comparing the two markets? Like, is there a lot that Aussies can learn the fact that you've got a foot in both camps and you're probably one of the few people in Australia who can speak from the privilege of looking inside of both markets. Like, is there actual relevance to compare and contrast the two I, markets? I think you should, mm. it's my opinion. Not, not only the UK market, there's a natural 
synergy, if you like, between the UK and Australia. But I think there's other markets that behave similarly. Canada is one of them. New sure. Zealand is another. I think you should always be looking outside. I think as as a as a business owner, but also as a banker, we need to look far more outside instead of comparing what we do at Bank West with what another bank is doing and keeping our focus quite narrow. I think you can always learn from how a loan's being processed overseas, what's the best way to build exceptional teams. So my advice would always be to look out rather than look in and just see if there is something that an individual would say, I quite like, there's elements here that I can see. Mm. Then you've got some way you can compare and contrast. Hence the reason why you went there in 2017. Was, outside of the social stuff, I, I found it quite enlightening. And uh, I can't remember the name of, of the company. I'm probably going to butcher this, but is it Town & Country or mm. ta- Town & Country Mortgages? Um, yeah, so they're, they're very big. They're, they're a very big operation. And uh, what, what I found, and I think COVID's been an accelerator for Australian broking businesses to embrace maybe a, a new way of operating, real sort of phone, so it's not relationship-based as in I need to eyeball you and sit in your front room of your living room to do your mortgages. It's it's very um, sort of phone, phone-based phone consultative approach to mortgage broking. And, and by memory, they were able to scale that operation significantly. And I think a lot of the Australian brokers and broker heads we took along with us sort of had a bit of a sort of hang, hang on a second, is is it the way we're doing it in Australia really the right way? Uh, COVID, you know, some of the best gifts come badly wrapped was a great accelerator for, you know, this necessity to actually sit there and watch someone sign a signature on a piece of paper. You know, there was no other way. We had to do it through through the marvels of Zoom. So it's been a real enabler. But I think I think the POMS term of endearment have always been a little bit ahead. So there's still some things to learn. There's uh, there's one particular company that were big in, in the UK and now in Australia, and that's Mortgage Advice Bureau. Yeah, is that uh, uh, Peter Brognicki's yes, business? Yeah, yeah that's uh, right. Yeah, And, and I, you know, I saw them present at an AFG conference recently. They, they have 9% share in the UK, of you know, which is a huge, that's you massive. know. Um, interestingly, a large number of their brokers are employed. So, you know, that's another dynamic that is slightly that's different. Um, yeah. And a lot of what they were saying, I could see levels of comparison to, and I could see AFG brokers in the room thinking, there's elements here I'd be quite interested in knowing more about. So, yeah, I definitely think there's transferable. There's some elements. And the same way, there's lots that we do really well here that UK brokers are really interested in. Yeah, and, and it'd be... Rude of me to ask you which you think is the better market to uh, to operate within Australia by mail. <laughs> I've been here sixteen years there now, so I'm completely converted. <laughs> and you know this this rise of mortgage broking in Australia uh, accelerated by in, in many ways through like, technologies augmented and enabled that. But I think it's about the flight to choice for Australians to ensure that most Australians are so connected with real estate and therefore uh, the mortgages they have connected with it. Uh, how do you go to from thirty-ish market share, seven percent market share in a, in a decade or so? Like that's the mortgage industry in Australia is moving and has moved quickly. Do you think it's got much left in it? Do you, do you reckon? Do you reckon we're sort of teetering on the top of that growth curve? Customers will decide. Mm. So, so it's customer choice that has taken us from thirty to seventy. And it will be customer choice that will either take us beyond seventy, or will plateau at seventy, or even. We have 19,000 brokers. Is that sufficient or is that too many, too little? Customers will make the choice. You know, why are brokers so successful? They have an entrepreneurial ship that I, I think is wonderful. You know, they're incredibly hard workers, really focused on their customers. They get repeat business because of that. I think they they treat lenders well and build relationships with lenders as they must do with their referral sources, as you say, real estate or even just existing clients. And it's building that brand and that proposition that says we can do all of these things for you and we can give you choice Mm. that I think has been the predominant driver to where we've got to and will likely be the same drivers that will take us beyond 70%. But consumers will decide. And and that's that's always the be all and end all, isn't it? If you and do a right job, yeah. the consumers will come to you. And consumers vote with their feet. Uh, part of his accessibility is a lot less bank branches around these days. Uh, but as someone who's uh, a passionately pro broker, I'm sort of like, well, you know, I'd be using a mortgage broker anyway. But with, you know, singing to the choir here. But um, to your point earlier around this idea is is mortgage broking at full scale right now? I, I think there is some growth still in market share. I think there are always people that go direct to the bank. It's just the nature of the beast. 
but how do you actually get this diversification to play out inside of mortgage broker in Australia? What more needs to happen? Because I know aggregators for years have been trying to get brokers to sell other things other than mortgages. And and maybe you'll just get to a point where they, they get to the top of market share in terms of mortgages products. And that's when you're going to see that diversification out akin to what you see uh, in the UK around sort of life, TPD, that sort of stuff. Um, or do you think it's always going to remain the same? Is it always going to be mortgage brokers going to be quite linear? Or do you think they'll do other financial products? What gives me sort of some positive thoughts about it will become more diversified is is the growth in the number of brokers now offering asset finance and commercial lending. Yeah. And indeed, the number of brokers offering protection. You know, these, these may still be smaller shares than the 70% in residential home loans but they are growing and they're growing at a real pace. So how far they will go, I think, is just is, is complete conjecture. But brokers are embracing diversification, I think, stronger post-COVID than I saw, say, in the five years pre-COVID. Not that I think COVID made a difference to it, but I, I've just seen an acceleration in the past two to three years. Mm. And you mentioned that in the UK, a bit because of the, the benefits of your time in the market and, and having entered the third party space so early, um, you, you spoke about professional brokers. So yeah, are, are people going through school saying, hey, when I grow up, I want to be a, a mortgage broker? Is it still one of those jobs that people find themselves in through through accident or chance uh, in the UK? And I like your views of, of what that is like in Australia as well as in this cadre professional brokers moving forward. Yeah, I think, I think we're I feel we're doing more to encourage people into the industry in the recent times than I think perhaps we've done before, mm. which I think is setting people up correctly when they do join the industry, whether that's through education or that's through awareness of exactly what the job is and then support that head groups give in terms of could be lead generation, could be mentoring, could be marketing. Uh, the UK was very similar, though. As, you know, as I joined, if you like, the, the broking industry at age 20, as I mentioned, and therefore got to know people in their 20s. And a lot did fall into the industry. A lot, interestingly, had either had their loan done by a broker and thought, I quite like this. I like the ability to build a business. I like the flexibility that comes with it. And I like the fact that I can I can earn a very good living from it. So I think there's a lot of commonality in that type of thing. What I have seen having been around the country in the last couple of months is we are a somewhat of an ageing population in terms of brokers. You know, I've been to a number of retirement dues of brokers in their 50s who've been, you know, tremendous servants and built wonderful businesses for the last 20, 30 years and are now saying, great, you know, I've done what I need to do. I've got a huge book of clients. I'm done. I've done my service to the community. I'm off, which is wonderful for them. Yeah. We've got to continue to refresh. We've got to continue to bring new people through. And I like of what a lot of the head groups are doing now to really attract, you know, through graduates and and even a reference before about what Mortgage Advice Bureau are doing, even offering things like salaries in some of the larger broker groups that I deal with as a way of saying it may not be as scary as you think it could be because we'll give you a, you know, a living to live on or, or a wage to live on whilst you build your book, whilst you learn your craft type of thing. That's going to be where our future's got to be because, you know, we've all been around a long time in this industry and, um, you know, there'll be a natural time when we all say we've done our bit. Absolutely. And I don't know if you can view it this way, but you're talking about the, probably not the right term, but the industrialization of mortgage broking versus it being more of a cottage industry. And, you know, in the big scheme of things, mortgage broking is still relatively young industry, in the big scheme of things, that said, it's writing 70% of all new home loans in Australia. So I think its market share has moved faster than probably where its recognition of profession really is. And I think that's the opportunity for mortgage broking moving forward is, you know, you have these aging brokers who probably got into it sort of, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, who have been the pioneers in many ways, shaping mm, that and supporting mm. that growth, the 70% market share. But how do we get how do we get a car drive of new people joining mortgage broking as number one, a, a fulfilling career, but number two, something where comparatively they can make a few bucks out of it. You know, that's yeah. the opportunity for the industry and probably one of the big challenges. And also I think as we think about what people in the sort of age range of, I don't know, 80 to 25 want, they may want something quite different from a career 
or a job mm. than we may have wanted at that same age. You know, we, we, we do a lot of work around how we attract people into the bank in that age range, what they're looking for in terms of experiences. And you don't see as many sticking in the same field of work for 20, 30 years. So how do we continue to use that skill range in the broker market? There's some very good uh, minds being set to this one. The head groups and some of the big ACL groups are really putting some great schemes together, but I don't think we can do enough to attract younger into the industry. I love a lot of the stuff that the head groups are doing to attract more females into the industry because yeah. we're very underrepresented in terms of females. And that way then we truly represent the communities that we're working with. Are you stressed out not knowing where to find distressed, off-market, high cash flow properties in high growth areas? What about the best strategy to build a wealth-generating portfolio? Look no further. Dragon Domofsky of Buyers Agency Australia can help. With over 20 years of experience as a property investor, Dragon is a qualified property investment advisor and expert buyers agent. So he knows how to find the best deals and negotiate for his clients. Right now, he's offering a free 45-minute strategy session to get you started, normally worth $500. Text the code BAA along with your name and email address to 0405-105074. That's 0405-105074. And take advantage of this offer. Take control of your financial future today. I guess you're a great example of being able to build a, a fruitful and engaging and, and, and what I would imagine a professionally satisfying career in mortgage broking. What is it about mortgage broking you think that's kept you in the industry for so many oh, decades rather than just saying, okay, right, I'm off to try something new and different? I would say mortgage brokers hold a lot of the same values that, that I hold and that I look for in my team and I try and encourage in my team. I've taught before incredibly hard workers. You know, my BDM team are completely um, responsible, reactive, accountable to their broker's questions. And whilst I don't want people to work, you know, 12, 15 hour days, I know that my BDMs will. So number one, brokers work really, really hard. Secondly, brokers are successful. We've talked about it before because they focus on the customer, that they're, they're, they're so committed to ensuring that that customer gets something tremendous at the the start of the relationship, which is a home loan or a business loan or an asset finance loan, something that's really life changing, and then maintain that customer support throughout the term of that loan, and then and then you know looking after other family members. But I also love the entrepreneurial spirit that brokers have in building a business. You know, I, I've been an employee you know, from a young age and never ventured out to do something almost as courageous as relying on my own talents and strengths to, to build a business. So it's very gratifying for me, even even in the 16 years I've been in Australia, see individuals that have joined our industry that are now running big parts of our industry. That's That's tremendous. You know, it's really satisfying. So long may brokers reign. I think they, they are wonderful examples of how you can really make a difference to people's lives. Which in itself is courageous. It's the, the value proposition of the mortgage broker. And we spoke about how customers will decide whether or not they choose to use the mortgage broker and how much further past 70% will go. I think that's, um, uh, we'll have to wait and see with it. But but you make a really good point. You've got to, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy industry to get into, particularly if you're used to the safety of a, a nice PAYG, you know, monthly paycheck. Uh, you, you need to, number one, really care about mortgage broking and what it stands for and what it actually delivers. But number two, be in a situation where you can potentially go f for a little while without the income maybe that you used to get. So, you know, new emerging business models, which some people are embracing, I, I know it's happening in Australia around sort of salaried mortgage broking to get people up and running and going. Um, this is where the innovation will continue, I think, in, in mortgage broking, which will be an enabler, I think, for, for driving forward value proposition moving forward, whether it's in a diversified setting or whatnot. But 
you know, sharing the same values as you mentioned as mortgage brokers, which gives you great satisfaction operating the industry. The same thing must apply then for Bank West because you've been there a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know many other people who have been a sort of, you know, with with their bank career bankers for so long. Um, good good place to work. Great great place to work. Yeah. You know, I um, Bank West previously were owned by the Halifax that I referenced. Mm. So you know, I came here two thousand and seven on a two year. You know, career break, career move. I was going to say a career break. It wasn't no. a career break. It's a a career move yes. to uh, to take Bank West out of Perth and and create a national business. So you know, landed in Sydney and began to grow the business. Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, uh, to the point now. You know, very proud of the fact fifty percent of Bank West customers now reside outside of Western Australia. And if I if I go back sixteen years, you know, that would have been sub five percent. So we've really grown the East Coast presence of Bank West. I've always worked with great people. That's kept me here. You know, the, the teams I've worked with, I'm very privileged to work with some of the the most committed people in the third party industry. You know, um, I've been here a long time, so have a lot of my team. And, and their commitment to their brokers is a big reason why I want to stick around. I've worked for some great people as well in terms of my leaders. You know, I think we've, we've always had a culture at Bank West of the customer will choose how they want us to show up. You know, I did it, it, it when I when I joined here, and I was building the broker industry here. I also opened fifty odd branches on the east coast. Okay, a number of years later, we don't have those branches, and the simple reason is the customer demand wasn't there for those branches. You know, customers want to transact largely digitally; they want to do their home loans through a broker. So, you, you know, the customer will will decide how we show up. And Bank West, I think, have always been good at responding to that. You know, that shifting dynamic. D- yeah. Don't forget, of course. Bank West has been in broker before Ian Rackett. You know, Bank West was one of the early pioneers and I, I take my hat off to the people who came before me who first engaged with brokers in Perth, you know, when the industry was fledging and we were one of the it's first to law get in firms there. just trying to work out a different way for clients, right? And that's the yeah, origin absolutely. story of mortgage breaking. Yeah. But, and I think that's a very pragmatic approach on behalf of uh, Bank West. But, you know, the sort of strategic rollout or expansion into the East Coast has obviously served you well. And I know... Bank West always scores pretty well on a lot of the rankings coming out of um, a mortgage business and, and the advisor. Do you get, do you get a lot of autonomy from the, the corporate parent? You're, you're doing something yeah. right, obviously. Do they sort of let you get at it and uh, continue doing what you're doing? But by that, I'm talking about CBA. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean, we, we share a lot with CBA. You know, we, we we share a lot of our governance of individual brokers, as you would expect. We, we share different ways that we think we should accredit and on board and sometimes occasionally, unfortunately, off board individual brokers. Yeah. But outside of that, we do run our own race. And I think that's that's the that's for the benefit of the broker and the benefit of the consumer, you know, to have two very strong, very broker facing brands offering slightly different propositions just gives you extra choice. Mm. You know, and I think it would be a shame if that choice didn't exist between CBA and Bank West. So you know, we have we have different LMI providers, so we have different credit policies, we have different pricing, we have different service propositions and so on. And the, the CBA broker team is just as committed to brokers as the Bank West broker team, and we love to get one over on them, and they love to get one over on us. And who wins in that? The consumer, because you've got... You've got individuals looking to win your business and looking to help the broker place the deal. So, mm. yeah, we get great support. They've they've been wonderful to us throughout and they've allowed it to, uh, us to expand in the areas that we've wanted to expand and they've supported us all the way. But we do run our own race when mm. it comes to our proposition to brokers and we're keen to make sure that, you know, we are something different. Well, therein lies the heart of what mortgage broking is, that is providing choice to Australian consumers and, and choice important, particularly when you go through markets like we're in right now and, you know, challenges around finance, serviceability and, and all this sort of stuff. So ensuring Aussies have the financial capability or the products available to them to continue to drive forward in owning property, whether it's for the purpose of owner occupiers or investment. I know a lot of Australians sort of talk a lot about it, leveraging finance so they can grow wealth through property is one of the, the great things in Australia. What do you reckon the best brokers are doing today that they weren't necessarily doing sort of five years ago? So, but as someone who covers a lot of ground in the broker space, you must see it all. I think customer expectations uh, post settlement have changed. Okay. So uh, I, I don't, you know, the good brokers always kept in touch with their clients. I'm not in any way suggesting that has changed, but I think 
brokers have needed to service customers more often. And I'm talking perhaps now in the last, you know, the 12 months, the really accelerated interest rate rises. I think that has made phone calls more predominant. Customer contact uh, to and from brokers have become more. So we do, we do far more repricing of customers than we ever used to. You know, and we offer that facility through our pricing tool so brokers can do that themselves. So they don't need to contact us in order to look at keeping that customer with us, but taking a little bit off the interest rate. So I think the servicing of existing clients has become a far bigger part of the role. Brokers tell me also that the level of work that's needed to do to pull a deal together is much higher. I think that's yeah. that predated best interest duty because brokers were doing this already, but certainly NCCP responsibility, responsible lending responsibility, all those things meant, you know, a lot of the work that brokers have to do is then repeated by what the lender has to do. One of the way forwards that I think will benefit everybody is is our ability to see what brokers see in terms of document collection, especially as we start to use data more than physical documents, mm. and then actually just verify that on the spot with the broker. And, and, and we're putting a lot of our investment into how we really speed up and avoid that duplication of the broker's collected some information, we will then read all of that information and make an assessment. Well, if we know where the broker's taken the information from, credit reporting, valuations, identification, all those things can be built, if you like, in common between bank and broker. You then get to a stage where you can approve things immediately because you're not having to revalidate what the broker's done. I really turned that question around, didn't I, then? No, no. Me, uh, but, well, <laughs> into, into some of the ways forward. But but I think that's where I've seen some of the extra work go into brokers. But I mm. then wanted to highlight where I think, I hope I will see some of the decrease in work for brokers because of the way that data is starting to permeate. Yeah, and, and there is frustrations with brokers around sometimes onerous processes and, and all banks sort of being a little bit different, right? And whether we get to the holy grail of it's the same for everyone, who knows? The people are trying to crack it for... For you, but do you reckon brokers are getting better at lodgements these days compared to maybe five years ago? Um, oh, yes. Yeah. You I, know, reworks, all that sort of stuff. You, you, the, yeah. Better quality stuff at the front end now. I, I, think, I think two things have influenced that. One is I think the banks have upped their game. You know, I think we we put far more time into training people before we let them loose on broker applications than I think we obviously we've done. So you don't, I never hear, touching wood now, of silly things that our validators are asking for. You know, if they want something, the broker can understand why they want it. I don't think that was necessarily the case five years ago, and that's no disrespect to the people who did it then. That's our problem as leaders of the business. So I think we've got a lot better I think we've made it clearer what we require from a broker in terms of collection of documents, which I don't think we necessarily did. I think brokers now better understand this is what this lender will need and I'll be able to fulfil it 10 times out of 10. Mm -hmm. The bit that excites me, though, just to repeat, is why do we need that document? You know, I, I go back to, we're talking about things in the past of, we used to do valuations by the value would turn up with his little step ladder and he'd go up into the attic of a house and you wouldn't get a valuation back, certainly in the UK, for seven days. And that was just known. You would, you would wait seven days for the valuer to visit the property. You look now at the majority of valuation decisions are made on a desktop. You know, they're made, they're made exclusively through data mm. and only a minority of applicants actually have a value of visit the property they're buying. That can then go across every aspect of, of underwriting. You know, so what you do on valuations, we're already doing on credit reporting and we're not too far away from doing it on other aspects whereby what used to take, in this case, the valuer a week will now take seconds to get you an answer. So... You'll still get the nuance between the lenders, and I think that will keep the competition really strong. That will keep brokers really strong. But the lenders are really stepping up in terms of making it simple for brokers to lodge, get it right, and then get an outcome really quickly. And that's good for everyone. It's good for the consumer, Massively. good for the broker, good for the bank from speed, efficiency, reducing stress. And I remember another mortgage study tour I was on to San Francisco. It wasn't too long after the UK one. We had, I don't know, some evangelist or someone from Salesforce come and talk to us and and then everyone was sitting around thinking, okay, so here we go. Um, robots are going to take over mortgage broking in, in the foreseeable future. And and uh, this, this senior person at Salesforce said, the digitization of financial advice is only going to augment and champion greater relevance for the professional to do their job more effectively. 
And what you're talking about very much is connected with that. It sounds as though banks are actually, and you can speak on behalf of Bank West, no doubt, but I see this sort of universally, that they're now starting to spend a lot more money on the digitization. I don't think digital mortgage is going to replace the mortgage broker at all. People are always going to want that human connectivity. But if the engine supports the system to make decision-making faster, less onerous for brokers, better off for consumers, I think that's the heartbeat that will drive mm-hmm the growth of mortgage broking in Australia and hopefully enable mortgage brokers to write more market share and hopefully enable them to to be more diversified. But you, you said something where you've invested, well, the bank's invested on the people inside of your bank who are doing the assessment. So I've always thought about these people because they're very nameless and faceless for as a consumer, right? It's with the assessment team. How are you going finding those people in the bank, um, which I imagine is sometimes quite a, a tough job sitting in in an office looking at mortgage applications every day. You've got to be wired a particular way. How, how are you going finding those people at the assessment side of things who are, the again, the operational engine that, that get loans through? A, a couple of things. So mm. uh, we have written into our strategy, we want to be the best broker bank. So therefore, there's a certain cachet for working in the mortgage stream, you know, okay. for it's working pretty, pretty with Pretty simple brokers. strategy. Yeah. Yeah. But, but therefore, people gravitate towards that because that's sort of like that's that's where we're going. That's who we're going to be. That's what I want to work in. So first of all, we get a good demand from within the bank for people saying that's what I'd like to do. Cool. We work on a case ownership model. So each broker will be the, the application that the broker sends us will be allocated to an individual who will work with the broker then all the way through that process. Now that means they get close to people. You know, it means they they get to use more skills than just validating pieces of paper. They're talking to brokers. They're looking to mitigate the deal. They want to understand more about the customer. That makes that job more interesting. We also share with them the survey reports. So the survey reports that Momentum Media do on uh, assessor quality, mm. uh, Bank West assessors number one in the market you currently. Do well. yeah. you know, and that gives them just as much a, a spur as it does, you know, how are the Bank West BDMs going? We're second in the market currently. You know, but that gives everybody like that lift to be able to say, I'm getting some regular feedback. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And ultimately, it's about putting a customer into a house, isn't it? Now, how good is that, that you can pay it, you know, you have a part to play in somebody buying a property, you know, especially a property that they own uh, and live in. I I, I absolutely understand the the value and equally with you on on the investment side. But how good is it? It's the enablement of the great, it's a great Australian it, dream. It is, right? you know, and yeah. It's very much at the core of it. And I think that's what why a lot of people, including yourself, gravitate t- towards mortgage broking. And, uh, you know, it's 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 an intriguing industry. And, you know, I look forward to seeing how it's going to grow and evolve uh, over the future. I'll conclude with this. And I don't know whether it's a relevant question or not, but um, I would, I'd imagine loans coming through the third party channel from mortgage brokers, there's got to be a baseline assessment by the broker that this this deal should be done, right? Mm. You know, it's silly to lodge a deal if it's not going to be done. Yep. So good brokers actually understand the requirements of the lender to, to to pass a particular deal. The assessors inside the bank, is is the mindset, um, I, I just need to tick these things off to confirm that this loan's going to go ahead or is that this loan's never going to go ahead and I need to prove for it to go ahead. So it's two very different yeah. mindsets. Certainly within Bank West, we're looking for within their delegation, because we don't want somebody making an error and we don't want to be lending money to somebody that Absolutely. they can't repay. But within their delegation, you're looking to do the deal. You want to you know? do the, 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 the do baseline. The deal. Is like, we want to do the deal. We've got to work out. We've just got to tick the boxes to ensure that this deal should go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mentioned before about some of our longest standing brokers. I went for dinner with one of them last Thursday in Perth. He's got a conversion rate from application to settlement of 92%. He bad. knows what Bank West will do. You know, mm-hmm. He knows the type of deal Bank West will do. And, and there'll be some where clients don't get the property that they're looking for. So, you know, 100% conversion is always going to be difficult. But our very best brokers know what deals we will do and we'll get a very high acceptance rate and a very high settlement rate. So, yes. So, it mat- like, absolutely matters for mortgage brokers to understand the, the credit policies because that's how you can be the great enabler for client choice and, and client satisfaction. That's how you grow the market share, right? And use the bank to fulfill any gaps you've got or to fill yeah. any gaps you've got in your knowledge. You know, use your BDM, use your policy tools, use your credit hotlines, all those types of things. Mm. Because it's in the bank's interest just as much as the broker's interest to get the right deals through because that's how all of us get paid. So you've been at this a little while. Yep. 
Loving what's it. What's next? Oh, same, more of the same? More of the same. I, I, you know, we've got big ambitions. Not only do we want to be the best broker bank in terms of what we offer, we've got big market share ambitions at Bank West. You know, we've seen what others can do going from a relatively low base to go to a, you know, a, a, a dominant place in the market. We think, you know, we've got a good reputation with brokers. We think we've got a lot to offer to brokers. We're just going to continue to lift and lift. And this, you know, will continue to be our dominant channel of distribution. So the work is not yet done. Not yet. Okay. Well, that for say connected. I'll keep yeah, an eye on. To. I I, I, I do that. read the reports and I, I do see Bank West always performing pretty well. Uh, Thank you. Must be I've never had a Bank West loan, but uh maybe it's time talk to, to your broker about I it. I should talk to my broker about that. I'm doing some refinancing right now. So uh you got some good rates at the moment, they're pretty good, pretty yes, sharp. Yeah. Pretty good, particularly yeah. on investor. Okay. That's what we like to hear. Good, good, good credit policies. Yes, <laughs> good credit policies, Phil. We'll talk offline. No, I'll we'll talk off. Okay, that's uh, Ian Rackett. He's a uh, general manager of third party banking at Bankwest. Thanks, Ian. I really enjoyed the chat, mate. Thanks for coming. Pleasure. It's really so, good. Thank you. And uh, this is mortgage and finance leader. It's part of the mortgage business, Momentum Media, which uh, for many, many years has been supporting brokers with uh, information, marketing, intelligence, uh, helping do your job better. And we're absolutely committed to uh, helping to play our role, albeit a small one, to, to help shape and grow uh, the mortgage broking channel in Australia and make sure more Australians are, are hopefully making better uh, finance decisions on their mortgage uh, through better informed brokers. Um, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye. There you have it, all the latest from Phil and Ian. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of the Smart Property Investment Show. If you have any questions, editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Make sure you're staying up to date with all the latest on our website. Subscribe if you have not already for our regular bulletins and our podcasts. And also check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Until next time, stay safe and well wherever you're listening from. Bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. Do you need help planning your next event? With over 15 years of experience, Captivate Events is the expert in event planning. Our dedicated team ensures every detail is meticulously handled. Whether it's a gala dinner, exhibition, conference or study tour, we've got you covered. We'll be there every step of the way, from conceptualisation to flawless execution, to ensure your event is a seamless experience, minimising the time and stress involved in planning. Make your next event one to remember. Visit www.captivateevents.com.au or call 02 8866 2440 and find out how we can captivate your audience.